Greetings, I am Herbert Herbaderp, and today I'm going to have a look at the Fallout Wasteland Warfare 2 player starter box from Modifius. Or Modifius? Not sure how that should be pronounced. Before I start, I'll just let you know that this video isn't going to be giving information or opinions about the rules and such, so if that's what you're looking for, you might be in the wrong place. I'm mostly interested in the models here. This is the PVC box set, and I bought it because it was cheaper than the resin version, though still quite expensive. And anyone who's been around my channel for a while will know how I feel about resin models. I was pretty excited about this and eventually relented and pre-ordered it. Fortunately it did arrive pretty quickly, which for the price I paid for the postage I definitely expect. A quick side note, the cost of the postage caused me to not buy any additional models for this game. As you can see, the artwork on the front of the box is pretty rad. You can't see it now because I removed the outer plastic, but there was a sticker saying a bonus alien figure is included. The back of the box shows us a kind of example of the game setup, pictures of the included tokens and dice, a brief description of the game, and a list of the contents. A list is all well and good, but a list isn't as good as looking at the contents, so let's do that. Right on top we see this Getting Acclimated booklet. This is a Getting Started booklet, and has all the information you would expect to see in that kind of thing. Then there's a couple of cardboard sprues of all kinds of tokens, rulers and markers that you'll need to play the game. Obviously having never played the game I don't know what any of them mean. I'm sure they're all explained in the rulebook and acclamation book. Then there are two of these gaming mat things. I'll open these out in a moment. The box only says there is one of these, but this looks like there are two. Then there's a rule book, which should have all the rules we need to play the game. It would be strange if it didn't really. I'm obviously not showing every page of this because it would take a long while, even though it's not an excessively long book. At any rate, the rules aren't really the subject of this video. There's also this campaign handbook, which strangely enough contains a bunch of campaigns. The tutorial campaign is at the back of the book for some reason. This does look to be pretty decent though, and it should be quite helpful. Then we've got a stack of cards. These are sealed, but we'll open them and have a look a bit later on. We also find a stack of Ziploc bags. Initially I was a little bit confused, but then I figured these are probably for you to put all of the tokens and stuff in once you've punched them out of the frame. And here are some more cards. These look to be items, judging from the hunting rifle card on top. We'll have a quick look at those later on too. And there's also a bunch of dice. These have a variety of markings, most of which don't make any sense to me at the moment. And what I think is the most important thing, the models. Which as you can see have not really had a great time in transit. At least I hope this is from transit and not how they actually packed the models at the factory. I mean, look at this dog meat model, it's been bent right over. I'm surprised it hasn't been broken off the base. We'll have a closer look at the models in a bit, but first, why not have a brief look at the cards and such. We get two faction cards, one for the survivors and one for the super mutants. Obviously because those are the models that come in the box. I would assume the other models you buy like robots and such might come with their own faction cards. The back of these cards have a bunch of information that tells you how the factions play. I figure this information makes a bit more sense if you've actually read the rules, and at this point I haven't. There's also a card for pretty much every model in the box. There's only one mutant hound card, but I guess they're pretty much the same thing anyway. So I guess that's not really a big deal. Obviously there's all the stats for the models on these cards and some special rules and things like that. I like the worn look these have, it fits the Fallout aesthetic nicely. Similarly there are these, I don't know what you would call them, additional stat cards for each model perhaps? They seem to be rules for shooting and being shot, and I would imagine these make the gameplay much quicker than having to look this kind of thing up in the rulebook. Also I really like the clawed monster thing on the back of these, it's kind of adorable. Something I think is cool are these AI responses. I was expecting there to be more of these cards, but to be fair I didn't really do any research into this before buying. I guess this is all you really need. I quite like this addition. It will allow me to play with myself. <laughs> I probably will make a solo play video. I do also plan to find a friend who has time and interest in filming a game with me. Not saying it's going to happen right away, but it will eventually happen. Now these smaller cards. There's a few different categories here. I didn't really feel like filming every card because, well, there are just so many. But I'm sure you can imagine how these might be used. What matters is they exist just as the box says they do. As we saw before, a handful of different dice are also included. It seems the different colours are rolled for different things through the game, and they look very dicey. Here's the gaming mat. 
It is not in fact two mats, but one mat that comes in two parts. I assume it must cost significantly more to print the entire thing on one 3 foot by 3 foot sheet. The print itself does look quite good, don't get me wrong, I like that, but I really don't like that they decided to do this as two separate sheets. I'm imagining what a ball ache it's going to be to try and play on. It's going to come apart in the middle and almost definitely be very annoying, especially if there's any kind of wind. Of course, a gaming mat printed on paper is never going to compare to a nicely modelled table, but still, I kind of expected it to be a single piece. It probably won't be a big deal to most gamers anyway. A lot of gamers are probably going to have access to a table of some kind that they can play on and have it look nice. Now, let's have a look at the models. That is the main reason I bought this box. I mean, I do want to play the game, but I do also really like cool models. I do have to admit that I'm a little bit disappointed by these models, especially after looking at the images on the Modifius website, which look super crisp and well detailed. These are, well, they don't quite live up to that. They're not bad models, they're just not quite what I was expecting. The detailing here seems to be a bit softer, much less crisp. That's not my biggest issue though. As you can see here, the bases don't quite sit flat, resulting in this comical rocking. Comical or annoying, either way. It's not a huge complaint, but it is a complaint. I definitely expected better. I think my biggest issue though is these models seem to have been assembled by somebody who doesn't give a shit. The gaps on some of them are quite bad. The Deathclaw isn't too bad, you could easily fill those gaps even though you shouldn't have to, but this figure, who is ostensibly the main character, has really bad arm gaps. Not to mention the bent gun. It looks like there's a blob of some kind of glue or putty or something in there, I don't know, but the gap is huge and looks really bad, and is unlikely to even look right if you use putty to fill it. This is obviously really disappointing. My assumption is that whoever put these together isn't paid enough to care. This other figure suffers from the same problem. I think they may as well have saved the money they paid whoever put these together and just left them as a kit you have to build yourself. I'm pretty sure I could put these together much better, and I do enjoy building kits. It would also make removing the mould lines easier. Fortunately, not all of the models have these horrendous gaps, and it does seem to mostly be an issue with the human figures. The super mutants were a little bit better. Something all of the models suffer from to some degree is mould lines. These should have been removed at the factory, especially for the price I paid, a bit more than $100. I definitely expect better. I will remove the mould lines, but I shouldn't have to. Again, this is where it would be preferable to have a multi-part kit instead of the pre-assembled figures. Removing mould lines from these assembled figures is going to be more of a pain than if they were unassembled. Let's have a slightly closer look at these models individually. First, the Mutant Hounds. These aren't too bad actually, probably some of the better mouldings in this box, though they do still have some obvious mould lines. Not as bad as some of the other models though. The detailing is mostly rounded and curved bits so the softer detailing isn't too noticeable here, unlike square straight edges where you can tell that the moulding isn't as sharp. The bases aren't perfectly flat but they're not as bad as some of the other models either. It shouldn't be too hard to clean up and they'll probably paint up into some nice looking mutant doggos. This super mutant is one of the better looking models in the box. His face could be sharper and more detailed, but as far as the gaps and mould lines and things go, he's pretty good. He's definitely going to need a bit of work before painting of course, and the base is pretty wonky, but he's not all that bad. I'd be happier if the rest of the models were more like this guy. He's got a lot of interesting armour and bits that will probably make him quite fun to paint. Another super mutant. This one has much worse mould lines, though there doesn't seem to be much in the way of gaps. Maybe this one was moulded as a single piece. It will take significant effort to clean those mould lines up though, which is annoying. I do however really like the pose. It's got a lot of action to it. I think this could also be really fun and interesting to paint, so there are definitely positives. Though like the previous model, and all of them really, the detail could be a bit sharper. This super mutant is much like the previous one. The mould lines are quite bad. No inappropriate gaps though, and the pose is pretty cool. He looks like he means business. He even has a couple of skulls as decorations. That's how you can tell that he's a badass. But the detail is a bit soft, especially around the head and on the guns. It also looks a bit like he's been bent forwards. I don't think he's quite meant to be leaning like that. Surely that's fixable with some bending though. The alien. This guy isn't too bad at all. In fact, I rather like him. He does have some mould lines, and he shouldn't, but I think I've already complained about that enough. I wasn't expecting this model to come in the starter set. I actually like this figure more than the Nuka Girl that was available as a pre-order bonus. 
I was almost tempted to spend the £120 needed to get that, but with the shipping it would have been well over 300 Australian dollars, and now I'm pretty glad that I didn't go for that, if I'm honest. Moving on, here's the Soul Survivor. The obvious complaint here is the huge gap in the shoulders. This passed QA, if they have QA. Also, the gun is bent. The figure isn't that bad otherwise. The gun and face are a little bit less detailed than I think they should be, but the mould lines on the figure don't seem to be too bad. The piping or fluting or whatever it's called on the suit does look a little bit like mould lines, but it's not, so don't shave them off. I'm debating whether or not I should cut the arms off this model and refit them so they look a bit better. That's more work than I think I should have to do on pre-assembled figures, but it might be worth it. Here's the power armour figure. This is, for the most part, pretty cool. I do like me some power armour. The mould lines are quite prominent though, so that's going to take a bit of work, and it would be much easier if he was in pieces. I'm almost certainly going to be unable to fix some of those mould lines due to being unable to access them. And that gun. This is probably the worst gun in the entire box, and I don't think there's really anything I can do about it either. It really detracts from the model, though I do think this guy should be pretty easy to paint up and look fairly decent. Not amazing, but decent. This settler is pretty simple looking, there's not a lot of armour or equipment or anything like that. Not that that's a bad thing. I also like the head wrap thingy, that might be interesting to paint. Unfortunately it does suffer from the big gap and rather bad mould lines, though I do think this one shouldn't be too hard to clean up. It does look as though the figure is slightly bent forwards, though I might be imagining that. It could be caused by the uneven base too. And here's dog meat, still leaning over quite a bit. Poor Doggo seems to have been tossed around quite a bit during transit and has been bent, obviously, if you didn't see that before. This won't be too hard to fix, and I do think it actually looks kind of funny that way. I didn't fix it before filming because I couldn't find my super glue, and this is a more accurate look at how the model came anyway. The mould lines are fairly minor on this figure and there are no gaps because it's just one piece. The detailing on dog meat is a little bit soft, like most of the other models, but he's still a good doggo and I quite like him. Here's another settler in what appears to be an old patched up coat. Not a bad figure. It looks like they might be some kind of sniper with that scoped weapon. Of course the mould lines are there, not the worst but quite obvious anyway. And even more obvious is the huge gap in the right shoulder. Those gaps are really quite frustrating. Again I might end up cutting the arm off and reattaching it myself. And then there's this guy who looks a bit more like a raider than a survivor, but whatever. This guy is pretty simple, but interesting enough. The mould lines are there of course and quite prominently, but at least there aren't any gaps. He's not quite as crisp as I would like, but having looked at the other models, that's not a surprise. I may be imagining things again, but he also kind of has a lean to him, though clearly not as much as dog meat. And the final model in the box is this Deathclaw, which is actually pretty cool and apparently this doesn't come in the resin set for whatever reason. The Deathclaw does have quite a few gaps around the place, though they are a little bit better than on the human figures. I think filling these gaps in should be fine and I don't think I'll have to remove them and reseat them before applying putty. The mould lines are there, but not too bad really. The base is, as I showed before, fairly warped, so this thing will probably rock and maybe fall over any time you bump the table, but I guess it could be worse. The detail, again, is a little bit soft, but I do think it's one of the better looking models in this box. Such a friendly death claw. Just wants hugs. Okay, so that's all the models. I know it might seem like I'm being a little bit harsh on these, but I also think I'm being fair. And I do like most of the models even if it doesn't seem that way. They're just not quite what I was expecting. Understandably, these are gaming pieces and a lot of people aren't going to care about the gaps and mould lines, they just want to play the game, but I was pretty much sold on this by a promise of really high quality models. I mean, look at the pictures from their website. Those look amazing. Obviously they're 3D renders, but I did expect to receive a product that looks a lot more like those, and I didn't get that. I guess that's kind of my own fault for getting excited about something that I haven't actually seen. And for pre-ordering. I'm usually reluctant to pre-order and this is why. I guess I'll just take this as a learning experience of sorts. I don't think I'll buy anything from Modiphius in the future though, not unless there's a significant price reduction. I will say that I'm glad that the postage cost made me reconsider purchasing extra models with this. It is kind of disappointing though because I was considering picking up some of their Star Trek figures, but I don't think I will now. They're not super terrible models by any stretch, don't get me wrong. They could have looked a lot better though. 
Maybe if they'd been done in hard plastic like Games Workshop or Warlord figures? I don't know. I do kind of wonder if maybe the resin models are actually better. I'm really doubtful when it comes to resin, and I'm almost always disappointed by resin models. I would like to see them though. If anyone has this in resin, feel free to share on my Discord or put a link in the comments. I don't really trust photos from Modiphius because they can just show their very best examples. I'm interested in what actually ships to the customer. I have my doubts that they're much better than these PVC models though. Probably not worth the extra $20 or so. I doubt if anybody from Modiphius will ever watch this, but I think it would be much better if these models were offered in an unbuilt kit form. I'm sure whoever assembled these isn't paid enough to care. It does cost more for that kind of thing. I'd prefer a slightly cheaper version that I could build myself. I'm sure I would do a much better job. When I saw that these were pre-assembled models, I kind of expected that they would be a finished product. You know, with mould lines removed as part of the pre-assembly process. For $106 plus postage, I definitely expected better than what I got. Maybe I was silly to do that. I probably sound a lot more negative than I really feel. I do like the models and the game is probably pretty fun. I just feel like for the price, the models should be better. And since they're the main reason I bought this box set, I feel like being disappointed is fair. I was pretty excited to paint these models too, but not so much now. They will get done, but they're not going to take priority over what I'm already working on. I do also plan to make a gameplay video with this. It might take a little while, but I will get around to it. Admittedly, I have lost a little bit of excitement for the game. I'm curious what you guys think. Have you got this PVC starter set? Or did you happen to get the resin models? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, why not sub here on YouTube, follow me on social media, or watch me live stream on Twitch. And if you really like what I do, please consider supporting over on Patreon, or perhaps purchasing a shirt or mug from my merch store. Links to all of those things are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.